Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Spotlight on MX24. It's just about 12 days to elections, and here at MX24, we're staying the conversation on politics. Today, we're taking a critical look at the Ningo Pram Pram constituency, and of course, we have the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram in the studio. Before you get to meet him, we'll go for a quick break. When we come back, Spotlight continues. <music> Welcome back to Spotlight. My name is Nuong Falong. Before that break, I told you we're staying the conversation on politics. Uh, if you're watching us, please join us on social media. We want you to get interactive. Join us at MX24GH on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Instagram. would love to hear from you. We have Honorable Sam Nete George, the uh, Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram, in the studio with us. We're going to be talking about uh, politics in Ningo Pram Pram and some other general issues. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you. Precious That's a nice man. shirt. What does it say? Uh, it's uh, the John Mahama 2020 logo. Oh, and okay. Then the team Jata, which is uh, my team that works with me. Okay, so wh which people make up team Jata? Uh, basically, my support structure, political support okay. structure, my campaign team, uh, my constituency executives, basically the people who make Sam George, Sam George. I am right. blessed to have... people who believe in you and support you. Yeah, I think I have the best political team okay. this part of the world. I think the only okay. political team that's better than the team I have was the 2008 Barack Obama team. How do you judge their competence because i see the work they do they've won okay. me three very hard fought elections okay. they're about to win me a fourth they, they pulled what is arguably the biggest upset in ghanaian political we, we don't know that yet which one that they've won three elections the, the fourth they are to win that's certain okay. that, i mean they've done it three times they'll do a fourth one i, I see mean. We'll, we'll get to that <laughs> before that a, a week ago today uh martin Amidu resigned yeah. for, very surprising uh, there are people who think he should have stayed. Uh, as we speak, there's been a replacement, I mean, in the interim, 
uh, Madam Cynthia Lamte. What, what, were you uh, surprised by his resignation, or are you one of the people who think he should not have resigned? Some also think he should have resigned earlier. What's your opinion? Well, good evening to our viewers. I, I believe that Martin, it takes a lot to make Martin Amido afraid and for okay. him to run. For Martin to tell you, you he's think afraid he for it. Mm -hmm. He said he had to resign because mm -hmm. the only protection he had had died previously, uh, the week before Mr. Rawlings, God rest his soul. For Martin to tell you that there are threats to his life and the threats of demise uh, make it untenable for him to stay on, uh, on the job, should tell you the level of threat and who it is that is behind those threats. And when you read his letter, it's obvious, it's clear that it is a state, the, the executive presidency, that could only make Martin Amidu so afraid that he would want to run. Uh, but the presidency also responded to most of the issues he raised. In fact, uh, to the contrary, should he have stayed? Well, if you, if you realize what happened to Ahmed Swali, who was, was helping the fight against corruption, Hmm. And, and, and in Ahmed Swali's instance, again, you had the president's name being mentioned by individuals in the number 12 video. You know, there, were, there was the talk about the president, the vice president, what their share was in whatever corruption money was supposed to be paid by the sheikh. When Ahmed Swali started helping the police with the investigation of that, a certain member of parliament issued a threat against him. In less than a month, he was dead. Um, when Dom Levo started uh, But the documentary was mainly uh, about football well, and mainly in, indicted football, the Football, DVHM. however, the president's name featured in there. President okay. Akufwade's name so featured did. in there. And we saw the fact that, and, and just two days ago, the former uh, CAF president, Ahmad Ahmad, has again been banned from football for five years. And in the case against him, Kwesin Yantichi's name was mentioned. Okay. And when you look at the pictures, Kwesin Yantichi and Ahmad Ahmed have met with President Akufuado with Namwan. So there's that picture that's got Kwesin Yantichi, President Akufuado, Ahmed Ahmed, and Namwan. You have seen what has happened with Namwan. We've been told that Ahmad Ahmed was, is a corrupt football administrator who's been banned for five years by FIFA's disciplinary committee. Oh, Yantichi no. has also been banned. Beds of the same feather. So you have a picture oh, no, of moving, four moving people. Away from football. Three of them have been proven to be corrupt. Last month, there was a man who was arrested uh, in Pong for performing rituals with your pictures. How far did that case go? It shows you that I serve a living God. I mean, if the juju could not succeed in even performing his action, and my God who is omnipotent and omnipresent, at the time I was busy in Ningo Pram Pram, my God was also Did you there. ever find out yeah. who was behind that? I mean, it's a well, he refused. He, refused. He, he claimed that it was given to him by someone from Afienya, which is in my okay. constituency. He refused to name the names. But I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm li least perturbed by those things. I serve a living God, so. Uh, earlier today, there was a, a press conference, and uh, Richard Ahiagba, he is the executive director at the Dankwa Institute. He made uh, mention of the cost of the promises uh, within the NDC manifesto. He, he mentioned some 119.7 billion uh, as the figure that will be needed to fund the manifesto promises. He claims these are impossible. Has but Richard Ahiagba told you how much it would cost the NPP in fulfilling their manifestos, that he thinks he has what it takes to talk about how the NDC will fulfill these manifestos? How, how would the money I'm be just, raised? I'm just going through, I'm just going through my, uh, my phone to pick up now, I just want to give you the costing. We've done the costing already of our uh, uh, promises. promises and where we're going to find the money. What for. does your costing say? Uh, take, for example, when you look at the, the jobs we want to create, for example, the jobs are going to cost 6.9 billion Ghana cities every Annually. year. Annually. Okay. And the sources of funding, we have identified 7.25 billion. Okay. So clearly, and I can give you line item by line so item. We want to. We, uh, let me first deal with the, the cost. The Ghana Police Service, we want to recruit 35,020 people. Mm -hmm. That's going to cost us 805,460,000. We're looking to recruit um, Ghana Education Service, 98,650 teachers, so that we, when we are ending the double track 
in ending the double track, you need to build classroom blocks and employ more teachers. So mm -hmm. 98,650 teachers. That will cost an additional 1.775700 billion Ghana cities. There's a full breakdown, breakdown mm -hmm. when it comes to NCC and recruiting 5,642 more people. By this breakdown, uh, annually it will be about 29, some 29 billion. No, it's 6.9 billion. Richard, I have, and that, this is, this is, on our, for example, this 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 6.9 billion is specific to our Ejumapa policy, the one million right. jobs that we say we're going to create. Okay, I and think so what he did was a total of all the he, he doesn't have the capacity to do that. Has he told you what the cost of even free SHS is? I mean, Richard, I have, you see, that gentleman excites me at times because he he cries more than the bereaved. Over the past two weeks, he's been debating me on what the legacy of Rawlings is. Today, he wants to tell you the cost of the NDC's policies and tells you that the NDC cannot fund it. Well, he, that's why he's not a member of the NDC. That's why he's the head of a policy think tank called Dankwa Institute. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, the, the, the jury's out whether that is a think tank or a septic tank. But the point that we need to make is Richard Ahiagba does not have the competence to analyze the NDC's manifesto and put cost to it. Uh, there's also been, the NDC did mention they are going to have a special tax force uh, to arrest uh, anyone who misbehaves during, you know, on December 7. Uh, there are some concerns that this may generate, you know, degenerate into violence. So then the ruling MPP should, not, should, should call their tags home. And not, the and the not security bring, forces will, No, you see, will, you see no, 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 no member of the NDC is going to attack any lawful law enforcement officer right the law enforcement agencies on duty that day are going to be drawn from the ghana police service the ghana armed forces the national intelligence bureau um yeah basically that's it the immigration fire and national ambulance service this and then the uh, the, the customs unit of the ghana revenue authority these are the agencies that will be operational on election day these are the agencies that make up the national Joint the joint tax force election and these tax are force. the state's uh, forces. Yes. So if you bring so your we, task so, force, so, and the MPP also so, brings their, their no, so, so we, are, want to we are just going to ensure that the hoodlums, the thugs, the bandits who have been put have you in, identified any? Oh, we know them. Uh, but at I also was working the the presidential commission. We put out the pictures of many of those young men. As we speak today, they brought forty of them, about fifty of them into Ningo Pram Pram. We are waiting for them. On election but, day, but, if any of them steps out, they will be dealt with. You know why? But who will constitute this, this tax force? That one, leave it for us to know. No, on election because, day, you know, there are concerns listen, of vigilantism. If you're bringing people that so are not tell official... The, pres the president is the chief vigilante in this country. President Akufado is the chief vigilante. But that has not been proved. Who says it's not been proved? It is his boys. The vigilantes who are running around are his boys. So you see, the general... The point I'm making is... The no, general no, consensus. one minute, one minute. The, the, the elections on December 7 a constitutional mandate. The same constitution enjoins all Ghanaians to defend and rise up in defense of the constitution. So if President Akufuado and his party will put up tags to come and intimidate voters... We haven't voters, seen them put up tags. Well, you don't know. We, we know what they are capable of. We've seen their action. And we are preparing for any action that they will take. Actions, reactions are only occasioned by action. So the if there is no action, there will be no reaction. The worry of the general public is, if you're bringing a tax force, of course your opponents will say they're also bringing a tax force. And then we're back to vigilantism all over the again. State, the, state, the state has the police. They have the security services. You, the police belong to all of us. Oh, they, they answer. The, the, you they also answer, have them. They answer to the state. They don't answer to the opposition. They answer, you they to, answer the to the state. The IGP doesn't take instructions he, he from the flag bearer. He answers to all of us. He answers the, to the country. The IGP doesn't take instructions from the, the flag bearer of the NDC or any opposition party. But he takes instructions from the, the, the flag bearer of the NPP. So if, if the tax force identifies troublemakers from the NDC, would they arrest them? Ah, and I'm saying that the NDC would not put up any troublemaker. What if there's a troublemaker? There's you no know, troublemaker. Maybe they are the NDC there to... will not put up troublemakers. Because your tax and, force listen, is there to arrest troublemakers, right? And uh, our tax force is there to uphold the constitution. The constitution says and joins you as a citizen to rise up in defense of the constitution when you see anybody acting in ways that would undermine the constitution. So anybody who acts in a way to undermine the peaceful conduct of the December 7 polls, that individual must be dealt with in accordance with the law. Anyone who tries to undermine the polls, Absolutely. what if the person trying to undermine the poll is from your side? Will Let the, the person be arrested? With, let the law deal with everybody. So long as you are, so long as you are 
breaking the laws. Whether you are an NDC person, whether you are a QFZ person, or whether you are an MPP affiliated tag attired in a national security attire, the law will deal with you. Uh, as someone who was directly uh, impacted by these kind of practices yes. during, you know, the Iowa West work on yes. by election. Aren't you worried that this may degenerate into some kind of violence? No, I'm actually prepared. Oh, are you are? Yes. I'm not worried. Because it is clear to me from my house West Wagon that the agencies of state would act at the whims and caprices of President Akufuado. And even when the president sets up a presidential commission made up of eminent people, like a former inspector general of police, like a former executive secretary of Shraj, like one of the leading criminal law lecturers in our jurisprudence, people who, when it comes to criminal law jurisprudence, one of the finest brains in our country. In fact, she's so fine a brain that our president has rightfully appointed her to the Supreme Court. Henrietta Mensa Boone Society, professor. These three eminent persons carry out the commission's work with Kofi Abuchi as legal aid or secretary to the commission, carry out their, their, their work, interview on in, in, in before the TV cameras everybody who was affected and all the stakeholders. Oh, no, but why, they make do you, up, why do you mistrust the security they make forces? Up, so they much? put out a report indicting people, and the president comes around and tells us through his minister for information that the people who he put on the committee, Professor Mary, Mary Tamensa Bonsu, Patrick Ike Champon, former IGP, and Justice Emil Short, did not understand the terms of reference. But, that, is, but, that tells you how much... But there was a good outcome where we had... What was the, eventually, outcome? we had the vigilantism law. Oh, that law, is, that law is a piece of legislation that is, has no spine. It's, it's, it's 15 years. It is, political, it is political gymnastics. It's just like the OSP. Did you read Martin Amidu? The, it's just like the special prosecutor law. Martin Amidu said... President Akufuado did not have any true intention of fighting corruption in a non-partisan way in his resignation letter. It's the same way President Akufuado has no intention of fighting vigilantism in a non-partisan manner. So those 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 legislations are they are they are they are perfect sound bites for news. But when it comes to implementation, the president is not ready to implement it. Honorable, uh, we have someone on the line. Uh, I, I think we we have Owusu-Amankwa on, Owusu on on the line. Uh, he's, my, he's, he's my part of the my, defense committee vice, in parliament. Yeah, but he's my vice chairman on the Ghana South African <laughs> Parliamentary Friendship He wants to respond uh, to some of the issues raised. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Mankwa. Hello, Mr. Mankwa. <laughs> Yes, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Good evening, please. C can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, have you been listening? Very well. Um, uh, first of all, um, let me thank you for the opportunity afforded me to join the discussion. Thank you so much for, for joining and in. To put it on record that um, having listened to uh, comments coming from my colleague member of parliament, uh, I am shocked uh, to begin with by calling the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces as the chief vigilante in this country. Uh, I'm surprised that uh, such I mean, unfortunate comment coming from, from a whole member of parliament of his teacher. And let me categorically state that this is not the first time we are witnessing electoral violence as far as uh, by-election is concerned. In any case, why is it that NDC is so silent about what happened uh, during the talency by-election? They are silent on Akwetia and Memphis West, but they keep on making reference to Ayawaso West Ugon by-election. It tells you uh, the kind of uh, hypocrisy and also double standard NDC uh, 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 always try to portray. Um, but I think uh, we are focused as government. Um, I personally believe in the security architecture of this country. Uh, I believe that the, the uh, security apparatus is well positioned 
to provide us with adequate security uh, before, during, and after the elections. Uh, so uh, for NDC to have come out uh, that we should not accept or believe the assurances coming from the security uh, apparatus, uh, uh, something that smacks of hypocrisy and double standard uh, uh, to retreat the uh, point that he, 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 uh, honorable year believes that uh, that is NDC for you. Once they are not in the helm of affairs, uh, they believe that whatever uh, any institution, agency of government or state uh, pursue, uh, it cannot be taken seriously. Uh, uh, but, honorable but I, I think I think we we, we are focused. Uh, once we we've been given the mandate of the people to do things that will go a long way to maximize their welfare. That is exactly what His Excellency, the President of the Republic, uh, Nana Dudanko Kufado, is doing. Uh, so, he, Honorable, here is saying that, you know, they're not satisfied with the interventions that were made uh, to the security apparatus post uh, IELTS West were gone. And for that reason, they are worried about how it will impact the 2020 elections, security around 2020 elections. Can you speak to that, please? Uh, Mr. Makwa, can you unmute yourself, please? We can't hear you. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, please go ahead. Very well. So uh, I wanted you to, to repeat what you said. So he, he, I didn't hear you. Uh, Honorable Sam George believes that uh, the interventions that were made and the changes that were made to the security apparatus uh, post IOS West Wogon are not satisfactory. And for that reason, is concerned about the state of security during 2020 elections. Can you speak to that? Well, I think uh, I'm on record to have said that um, uh, when it comes to ensuring uh, very peaceful and also credible elections, uh, the onus lies on the stakeholders involved, um, which cannot be limited only to government or uh, security agencies, but also the media, uh, the citizens, and, uh, including all the political parties, uh, we all have a critical role to play uh, to ensure that uh, we enjoy free, fair, and firm elections. Uh, but it appears that, uh, uh, to the best knowledge of NDC, uh, whatever assurance that has been given by the state security apparatus uh, ma 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 must be thrown into air. Um, I think uh, that is a strategy uh, of NDC just to uh, create uh, a, a, an impression that uh, the, the, the December 7th election is already compromised. You think uh, their concerns are, are not legitimate? Legitimate as in setting up a paramilitary force no, uh, be, uh, beyond, beyond that station? particular action, you know, there are concerns about uh, the, the bias of the security forces. Bias as in what? Well, they believe the security forces are Bi biased. Well, well that, that, that is figment of their imagination and they are afraid of their own shadow. Because we are in this country when a whole minister responsible for interior uh, uh, came out publicly endorsing violence by uh, NDC vigilante group Azoka Boys, that violence begets violence. Remember that infamous statement by uh, 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 then Minister uh, uh, Wayongo? Um, we were in this country where um, a personal bodyguard to Minister of Tourism, um, Honorable uh, Zita Okaikwe, was involved in a, a, a lot of violence activities, including uh, a highway uh, a robbery um, between Accra and Aflau uh, 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 Highway. Uh, so uh, we were in this country where a whole uh, 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 DC uh, from Quanta was killed in the cold blood, including uh, 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 Chief of uh, Nsoko, who also happened to be hometown of the NDC chief scribe. Uh, Mr. Isir Dunketia was maimed. So, you see, that is NDC for you. Uh, we witness, I mean, high incidence of lawlessness 
and violence mm -hmm. under their watch. But what we see now, the president promised to secure and also to provide uh, uh, security and safety for all. And as we speak, I mean, Ghana is, 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 is largely peaceful. Uh, people are going about their normal duties. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why, based on the uh, uh, Global Peace Index survey, we were rated as the most peaceful country within the sub-region. So, so I'm surprised that uh, a party like NDC would come out to say that they don't believe in the security architecture of this country and, and they are not safe. If that is their logic, then, then I beg to differ. That Thank is not the thinking uh, of the absolute majority of our people. Thank you so much. We Honorable, are safe would you like to react to that? He, he, he believes that, this, uh, that your concerns are a figment of your imagination and Ghana is largely peaceful. Auntie Agisan, Colin Samankwa, he himself is evidence of the breakdown of law and order in this country. What, what has he done to... He to was this? slapped, assaulted by his own party's regional chairman. What, law what did law enforcement do about it? What did law enforcement do about him, a sitting member of parliament, being slapped by his own party chairman? And he tells me that there is law and order. Is it not the same Ashanti region we saw arm robbery during in broad daylight? He wants to talk about chiefs who were murdered. Does he know how many people were, have been assassinated? Then we can start listing professors, heads of uh, people who work at Ghana Ports and Harbour, the, the mankral of Pram Pram, the mankral of the, the chief of Sota. And we can go on and on and on. But you see, when we talk about insecurity in the country today, it is not even a regular crime that you are, you know, happens in every country. The, the robbery from time to time where the state has to deal with. We are talking about the perpetration of violence against citizens by the state. Manasseh Azuri Awuni, what drove him out of multimedia? Why did Manasseh Azuri Awuni have to go and seek asylum in, 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 in South Africa? What happened to uh, Adeti, Emmanuel Adeti of Stifel? Because he showed, he exposed the rot and the corruption in Roxin Bukhari, who was a minister of state at the presidency. What happened to Ahmed Swale, who was murdered in cold blood for trying to expose the rot in Ghana football linked to the office of the president? What happened? You know, what happened? What has happened honorable. to several journalists who have had to go silent today? No, you yourself. These several are journalists in this country. These are not allegations. That's they haven't been proven. We haven't had hard facts, uh, to, prove, had hard facts. to tie them to any particular person. No. How many times have you not been attacked? for even stating your mind and opinion by minions of the government. So those are usually, uh, yes, I, I, I mean, most journalists get attacked for, for speaking and out. And these NDC, are individuals who attack many, them. No, you see, it's a different thing if some NDC supporter or some party supporter who claims, who uses a party a, a, a logo as his DP or something attacks you. But when people who are paid with your taxes and are working in the office is, of the president... Foot, foot soldiers are, are not paid with please, your taxes. No. There are presidential staffers who have come after after journalists. If not you, your colleagues, you know. Honorable. There are people who sit in the presidency today who are presidential staffers, who are paid with our taxes, who will come after you, insult you. How many times have they not called the, the, the owners of media houses to threaten them because journalists have stated and exposed the fact? What happened to Joy FM? When uh, Joy, again, even Joy FM, even Joy again, FM, when they were, allegations. Not allegations, on, these are facts. When, when Joy FM was recently airing the corruption scandal, hmm, the one from NLA, what happened to their signal? When President Mahama went to Ashanti region to speak on radio, what happened to the signal there? When Professor Nanaji went there to speak, these are what happened to the signal? Technical difficulties. The technical difficulties only happen when you're exposing corruption in the MPP government. Then it means that our technical difficulties have a political color. Hmm. Uh, Honorable, let's move back to Pram Pram. <laughs> That's what you're uh, you, you were talking about how your, your team uh, is one of the best teams and is leading you into the next uh, election. Yes. Uh, what is the relationship between you and the Nigo Pram Pram NDC chairman? Is he part of the people campaigning with you? The, we have an acting chairman. Okay. Yes. He used to be vice chairman. The chairman, the elected chairman, contested me in the primaries. So he's no longer chairman. But the, the vice chairman is the acting chairman. Is he part of your campaign? Oh, yeah, he, I mean, he, he's, as long as work allows him, he works 
Um, I won't put out where he works, but he works for he works for an agency affiliated to one of the foreign missions. And so a lot of times he's on track. But anytime he's in the constituency, he's on the field with me. Even this evening, we've had conversations about the election. So yes, my acting chairman, Mr. Enoch Norte, yes, he's, he's actively engaged with the campaign as and when uh, work allows him to be in the constituency. Uh, what about last Sunday, he represented me in a church. Yes, last Sunday I had 15 churches to attend. He represented me in one of the churches. What about the previous, uh, the, the elected chairman who contested against you? He's a member of the party. He's part of the Have campaign. Have you been able to bring him onto your campaign? Oh, he's working and he's working. He's been, he's been made a member of the regional finance committee. So he's working in with the region. He works in the constituency. He works, I'm aware he's also working in other constituencies across the country. Um, about a month ago, I know that I was on the campaign trail, but I know that he met with the constituency executives and even made a donation of a thousand t-shirts to the campaign. So yes, he's, he's working actively with the, with the, with the constituency. What about E.T. Mensa? Is he actively working with the team to support? I don't know that he's active. He's a member of the party. Yeah, but there are several people who are members of the party who, for age, the reasons of age, you won't see Alaji Mahama Idrisu on the campaign trail, even though he's the chairman of the council. Is that why E.T. Mensa is not vibrant in, in the campaign? That you would have to ask him. I don't know. But as, uh, like I said, I'm his MP. He's my constituent. And so, um, yeah, we have that MP constituent relationship, like I have with all my constituents. Do you, do you speak from time to time? I don't you? speak with all my constituents. So it would be him unfair in for particular. you to ask me, well, would you ask me about the next constituent and ask me if I speak with him? Well, like I said, I, I, I am his MP. He's my constituent. And so as long as he has any need for his MP, when he reaches out to me, I would offer He's not a services. regular constituent. He's a strong member of the party. He's Why haven't you asked me if I've spoken to Honorable B.B. Cabo, who was maybe, the first maybe, member Maybe I, have, I haven't come to that. You get it. I mean, these are elder statesmen, and um, when, when your father works and goes on retirement, you don't expect your father to come and do the job that you, the son, is now supposed to do. When your father goes on retirement and hands over the reins to you, you do so the job. So he's handed over the reins to, to the team that's working now. I, I believe so. That's why he's not contesting for the election. Right. Uh, and, and that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> Honorable. You are asking for another term in yeah. the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. Why should the people of Ningo Pram Pram give you a, another term? Because I've served and I think I've discharged myself creditably. Um, for a first term MP who went into parliament with his party going into opposition, I believe that uh, the feedback I get from my people is that they are, they're comfortable with the work I've done and how I've conducted myself. There, there, there are some people who even argue it out and say that, no, he's not a first term MP because of the number of times they have an amount of contributions we make on the floor of the House. Um, when it comes to my primary work of legislation, I believe that I have comported and carried myself well on the floor of the House. In the two committees I serve in the House, the Committee on Communications and on Public Accounts, I have distinguished myself with the work I've done in, in, in my first term in Parliament. When it comes to my ancillary role of being a lobbyist for development, I have as well tried my best. You just have an incompetent government that when you're lobbying, uh, when you lobby 100%, 100% of zero is zero. So it's like me coming to somebody's house to ask for food, and I get to the doorstep of the person, and the person's first son is crying that he's hungry. I would as well turn, my, turn around and go back home. Because if the person I'm coming to beg for food, his first son is hungry, I won't get any food. saying the government hasn't been too, too supportive in... Because even, the government, the even, even constituencies where the MPs are MPP MPs, the government has been unable to even meet the needs of those MPs. How much more in my concern? This, this government has been a failure. It's been a sham, you know. And so um, on that level, there's been not too much that's been achieved because central government itself has been a failure. But when it comes to the things that I can do on my own, using the limited resources available to me, either by way of personal resources or the MP share of the Common Fund, we've invested heavily in human capital development. So 147 of my constituents uh, are currently on the MP scholarship. That number is going to go up in the next few weeks because as we speak, we're processing uh, further scholarships for about 20 students. This is all financed from the Common Fund? No, that's what I said. Some from the Common Fund is not sufficient to finance even 147 that, students. That's why I'm wondering, where university. does the so money come from? Personal funds. There are those who I have to do with personal funds. You must funds. be very selfless. You're doing this from personal... I am, I am serving my people. I put myself up to serve my people. And, and I'm able to raise funding from 
uh, people who believe in my course and, and raise these funds. We're not, we're not just doing that. We've set up 75 people and businesses. I have a program called the MPs Livelihood Support Program, where every year I, I set up a number of people in livelihood uh, employment. So we set up businesses for them and then they run the businesses. The set up capital could raise. Is there a criteria for, for picking? Uh, beneficiaries? Mostly it's on a first come first serve basis and if we realize that yes you truly have a business that you want injection of capital into or you come to us with a workable plan. This for that you any, want any uh, of the constraints or if the person has to be M NDC? I'm MP for everybody. Okay. Even the MPP can parliamentary candidate Alex Marty, if he's filling out a form today and they ask him to write his MP's name he'll write my name. I'm the MP for everybody. So I take care of everybody. When I said, when I, one of the things I did this year was to help the farmers with 4,000 bags of fertilizer. I sent some to the MPP constituency executives because I'm their MP, because some of them farm. You get it? So for me, it is, it is not, and like with the, with, the, with the scholarships, for example, I don't know the individuals. The letters are dropped off in my, in my, in my office. I do not know who the people are. It's, like I said, it's first come, first serve. I process when the funds are, are done, it's done. So many of, and when I process it, you go to the education office and pick up the check. So I never really get to interface with these individuals. On my campaign trail, when I say I've paid school fees for people, then people stand up and say, yes, my child is a beneficiary. And I'm like, oh, really? I don't even know them one-on-one. -on -one. For me, I'm serving my people in what ways I can do. We've tried to boost security. We've provided two pickups for the police service. We've provided 10 motorbikes for the police service. We've provided over 500 streetlights for the constituents. So we're, we're trying in our own little way to augment the failure of government. Government's failure in, ex in, in bringing development. Oh, no, but I'm trying hold to that thought. We'll, we'll go for uh, a quick break. If you're still watching... Uh, we're speaking to the Honorable Sam Nerte George. He's the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. He's talking us, uh, to us about some of the developmental interventions he's made in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, Spotlight continues. <laughs> Welcome back to Spotlight on MX24, your home for fun, fearless, and factual content. Uh, if you're watching us, please, we want you to get interactive. Stay with us on social media at MX24GH, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Later, you can call into the conversation on 020-473-8481. Uh, again, 020-473-8481. Also on 055 The phone lines will be open in a moment and you can contribute. We're still speaking 
uh, to Sam Nete George, the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram constituency. Uh, we were talking about your, your basis for asking for re-election. Yeah, so I, I gave you a rundown of what we've done, but then we have a, we have a roadmap going forward under the, next, under, under the next NDC Let's look at education and employment. Yeah, yeah, we, we, will, we will look at those because under the next NDC administration, under employment, we're looking under the Ijumapa policy to access our fair share of the 1 million jobs that will be created in the Ijuma, under the Ijumapa policy, 250,000 jobs every year. So in the security services, I mean, today I go around and my constituents ask me, why is it that they are hearing that people are being recruited but no advertisement is being done? That, again, is another wrong and ill of the Zakufado government, where they are doing recruitment into the security services without advertisement. But we've assured them that under the next Mahama administration from 7th of January 2021, those job opportunities will be open. Teachers will be employed to fill in, to, to deal with the traffic light system, which is called the, uh, the double track system in, in, in the free SHS. Um, when it comes to healthcare, for example, or education, you asked me about education, the Fienya Youth Leadership Institute has been earmarked by the next NDC administration to be transformed into a world-class technical and vocational institution. Remember, the NDC has a cardinal policy in education where we're going to make TVET free at the secondary and tertiary level. And so the Afyanya Youth Leadership, Youth Leadership Training Institute is going to be remodeled into a TVET institution that's going to be offering tertiary level vocational skill in that in that in that in, in my constituency. Again, we're going to get one of the e-blocks that uh, the Mahama government started to ease the pressure on Pramsec and Ninsec. If you look at the way my constituency is structured, one up there in Afyanya is also going to help. When it comes to the area of healthcare, for example, President Mahama has promised that as part of the big push agenda, where you're going to see $10 billion worth of infrastructure, Ningo Pram Pram is going to get a district hospital. Now, we, we have heard the MPP also say something like that, but it's a question of trust. Who do we trust? We look at President Akufuado, and in four years, we cannot point to a district hospital he started and oh, completed. No, but, uh, but we look, we look I'll just finish, but we look next door to Dodowa, Shai Osudoku constituency. In four years of President Mahama, he built them a Dodowa district hospital. So we have hope and trust in President Mahama that he can fulfill the promise. Oh, no, but we have uh, Shadrach from Tapa on the line. Shadrach, are you still on the line? Yes, please. I'm still on the line. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about the delay. Uh, you're welcome to Spotlight. Thank you. Your opinion, please. Okay. Well, I think I am comfortable with what Anabu Sanjaj is doing, saying because based on what happened at Iowa so well, that is why the NDC is trying to make everything possible to protect their ballot box. So I think this time the security needs to be fair enough so that there can be peace because looking at what happened at Iowa so, you may see that most of them were not we're not police personnel, but yes. also we're vigilantes. Thank you, thank you so much. So I think uh, what you're doing now is very good for them. Thank, thank you, you so much, Shadrach. Uh, Haruna Salam is also on the line. Haruna Salam. Yeah. Haruna, are you yeah. still with us? Yeah, yeah. I'm still with you. Do go ahead. My honorable, good evening, sir. Good evening, Haruna. Yeah, I'm Upper calling from Upper uh, Boku West and in Upper East Region. Please go ahead. Yeah. I can hear my voice. <laughs> Haruna. Yeah. We're listening to you. Go ahead. Thank you. Hello, I Honorable, I want to just tell Honorable one thing. Honorable, we are grateful to have you in the NDC. Hey. And we are assuring you, inshallah, we are going to win even more than last time we, we, we won. Masha Allah. And I want I want to appeal to you and the NDC fraternity. We are winning hands down, but on the 9th to 10th de December, I want His Excellency, the elected president, John Zaman Mahama, mm. to question the security agency. Those who will go the NPP member who has donated cars to people. They will be going after the cars. They should stop them. They should not allow them to pick any property from them because it's Thank you Ghana. so much. Thank you so much. Uh, We're grateful for your contribution. Honorable, yeah. uh, Ningo Pram Pram has been uh, named as a hotspot for during the 2020 elections. What are you doing as a constituency to ensure that 
there's minimal disturbance. As member of parliament, and, and let, me, let me use this to state that the NDC holds a very cardinal position on security and our security services. We believe that we have some of the most professional officers in the Ghana Police Service especially. However, there has been a dilution of the numbers by this party hooligans who've been put in there. We have absolutely no problem with the professional officers of the police service, and we will work with them. I have made an appeal on several platforms, and I use your platform again, to appeal to the Inspector General of Police. If you've targeted of, or, or flagged Ningo Pram Pram as a flashpoint, let us have adequate security, policemen in the official police uniform, which is the blue-black, the blue, or the blue-black camouflage. If you're going to have military men, the Chief of Army Staff should give us enough men. We have the Bundasi military camp in my constituency. Have they been in touch to liaise with you? Oh, nobody's called ensure. me or asked me anything. But I am saying that even though they may not, and that's why I told you, when you said they, 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 they report to all of us, I told you no, they report to the presidency and the party in power. But what I'm saying is very simple. I, I want my constituents to vote in peace. I have stated that I'm going to increase the margin between the NDC and the NPP from 11,000 that we managed to do in 2016, which we raised from 3,000, by the way, to 11,000. We are moving it from 11,000 to 20,000. To achieve that, we need the people to come out to vote. The NPP is interested in doing voter suppression in my constituency. So we will not suppress the vote. We want peace. If there's anybody who is caught violating the peace, the police should deal with the person according to law. We'll get to the, back to that shortly. Isaac from Ningo Pram Pram is on the line. Hello, Isaac. Oh, wow. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. So, please. Uh, hello. Isaac, we're listening. Yeah, please. Like, I want to ask Honorable and we commend him for the good work that he's doing. But I want to ask him concerning Ariam. There is a road linking to the old Nungo. The road is in a deplorable state. Yeah. I want him to assure us that when we vote for him December 7th, what will he do concerning that road for us? Thank you so much, Isaac. Uh, before we get to that, let's take Mubarak from Ashama. Mubarak. Hello, Mubarak. Yes. We are listening to you. Yes. Good. Good evening. Good evening, Mubarak. Please uh, yeah. proceed. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Can you proceed? Yeah. I'm calling from Asaima. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we lost Mubarak over there. Uh, Honorable. 28 years. I thought you I was going to address the issue of roads. Yes. That road. the, On the issue of roads, it's not just the old Ningo to through Ahriam to Mango Chonya. There is also the old Ningo to Chopoli and then the Afienya to Dawenya Road. These are key roads that have been captured by the NDC, the next NDC administration, under our big push agenda. The contractors on that road, the contractors have not been paid. That's why the road has not been done. And so we're hopeful that. Hope when, when, when the good people of this country elect President Mahama under the big push agenda, and President Mahama himself made this commitment to my constituents on the 28th of October, when he was in my constituency this year, that those roads will be done, they will be fixed. And I trust President Mahama to deliver, because I've seen President Mahama do the asphalt 16 kilometers from Pram Pram all the way to the Old Ningo Clinic. I've seen him construct the Dawa to, old, to Mango Chunya Road, and these are all longer stretches than the current stretch from Old Ningo to Mango Chunya. So the man who's done the other two stretches, I believe, will do the third one. In 2016, there was a lot of uh, focus on infrastructure. How, why was this particular stretch missed? Well, that's what I'm saying. It was impossible to have completed everything. Some of this, the Afenia Dawenya Road, for example, was, put on, was awarded on contract in 2015. And throughout of 2016, the contractor was actively working on the road. Then 2017 happens, and you've had four years of no action. Four years of the roads deteriorating. We have another That's person from is Afienya on the line. So let's okay. quickly take that. Uh, Mahmoud from Afienya. Afienya. Yes. <laughs> they are worried about the road. Mahmoud. Hello. Yes, Mahmoud, we're listening. Evening. Good evening. I thank Honorable. So I love him too much. <laughs> Please go ahead. He told you what he was doing. He loves you. He gets one word from Mobile. It's for me. Okay. Bless you. If one vote, uh, me and my wife and my daughter, if you get three votes, so now three. From Thank you. God bless so, you. 
so uh, thank you. I love you too much. I don't want to go back to you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, Honorable, like, he called to tell you he loves you. <laughs> it tells you it tells you I've been working on the ground. It tells you the relationship I have with my constituents. Uh, Ebenezer is, uh, from Sekendi is on the line right now. Ebenezer. Uh, Ebenezer. Yes, mother. You are listening. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Ebenezer. Uh, let me let me greet uh, my man, Yaka, Go the on. lion. Yes, you are doing a great work. So Thank continue. You. Thank you. In fact, uh, having tasted NDC and MPP in second year, where I can see railway station, I can see youth center, where I can see teachers resources center here. The Kendi Lorry Park, the uh, SA Bridge, NDC has done a lot in my constituency. So uh, I, there is no way I have to vote against such a party. So I'm entreating every Ghanaian to give John Dramani hey. Muhammad. Uh, thank you very much. To... Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Honorable. Yeah. 28 years of NDC dominance in, in Ingo Pam Pam. Uh, but over the years, the, the MPP has slowly increased the stake in the polls. Are you worried that this could be the year that they cross 50%? Worried. This will be their worst performance. Mark my words. It will be their worst performance. I mean, <laughs> if you look at the percentages... There was a reversal of whatever gains they had made in 2016. And by God's grace, we're going to extend mm. it. By God's grace and the hard work of my team, we're going to even extend and expand our control. And people should not forget that Ningo Pram Pram has become, has grown over the years. There's a lot more um, settlers within the constituency. So the dynamics of the numbers have changed. And so even with the influx of settlers, and in, in some of the communities, the settlers now outnumber the indigents. When you look at the Afienya area, Mataheko area, when you look at the Dowenya area, the settlers that outnumber the, the, the indigents. Yet I was able with my team and by the grace of God to expand the hold of the NDC in that constituency. And we're going to do even better this time around. And so at the end of the day for us, the people re realize that in 28 years, yes, there's been the dominance of the NDC, but everything, every single thing that you can lay hands on in Ningo Pram Pram, that is infrastructure-based, is a legacy of the NDC, from schools to roads to electricity to water, everything, every single thing. The NPP has nothing to show. Let's take the last caller from Pram Apart Pram. from closing GN Bank and shutting down Saglimi House. No, we'll take the last caller from Pram Pram. Awuni Lati from Pram Pram. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good what? evening, Mr. Sam George. Good evening, Al Chawule. Ke, ke ke? Uh, 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 I'm um, Lati Awuli from Ningo Pram Pram. Close to the police station, lower from from. Yeah. Uh, Honorable, more grease to your elbow. One thing, I'm one of your campaign guys who are pushing for the good work we are doing. Thank one you so thing much. We God are bless asking you. of is one of the astro thefts at Ningo from from the Anglican Park where we used to have fun. You know, this astro theft flying all around. We've not gotten one at Ningo from from the Ghana Sports Complex. Is for a big occasion, but we need one at the Anglican Park for we, the youth, to have fun over there. So this is the lesson I want to make you aware of, of what the youth are calling for. Thank you very much. And more you know support for you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you too. Th thank you so much. Uh, you were on increasing the MPP stake, which you no, say... No, decreasing the MPP the, stake and increasing the NDC stake. You the, the increasing is impossible for, for the MPP. Yeah, it's impossible. Ben Efson has predicted uh, for, for 20, 2020 presidential that the NDC will pull some 45% uh, votes. Do you have any belief in his predictions? I don't discuss jokers, the work of jokers. Well, why do you call him a joker? He's a joker. Tell me what Ben Efson has ever called and called right. In my case, He's Ben Efson... He's a credible pollster. Please. What, what do you call credible? That's a joker. I mean... He's crying for importance. You treat him, you treat him with the disdain that he deserves. Benefsin has called three elections that I would lose. I won all three. He's called that I will lose this one again. I will win it. I mean, what did Benefsin say? Benefsin said the NDC was winning 
the 2016. Is, it, is that not the same thing he did? In 2016, did he not say that President Akufado will poll 45.9%? Now he says President Muhammad will poll 45.7%. The man sits in his office, doesn't step out, doesn't send correspondence anyway, sits there after he eats broke, coffee broke man, then he does a poll. If, Please, if, I mean, if, like I said, I won't discuss jokes. If former President John Dramani Muhammad does not uh, win in 2020, would you advise uh, uh, another attempt in 2024? Sorry, I don't engage in, con I don't discuss conjecture. That's conjecture. Right. There's, there's one statement of fact. President Mahama is winning the next election. That's what I'll discuss. Any other thing is engaging conjecture. It can be or cannot be. Then we go into the realms of Owusu Bempa and those kind of people. Let's do science. Science is showing that President Mahama is winning the next election. How, how, how would you score the, the NDC, uh, MPP's performance so far? Is there a grade lower than F? G? Give me a percentage. Negative five. <laughs> Negative five percent. Uh, they failed at everything and excelled at only one thing: corruption, corruption and violence. That's the only thing they've excelled at. I mean, it's a competition between the appointees of the president and the president's family on who will rape the public. What personnel. about free SHS? You're not impressed by free. You see, how will I be impressed with a policy that is making young girls in my constituency? get pregnant because of the long hours that they are spending at, at home. What, what's the data? I, I'm on my constituency. Come around with me. I invite you. Let's go on the campaign trail tomorrow. And let me take you to communities where you will see young girls who've been put in the family way in the past two, 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 two years simply because of the long months that they are spending on the campaign trail. I meet them. The parents are complaining. Look, free SHS is a good thing. But when you do a good thing in a wrong way, when you put kids in school for six weeks and put them at home for four months and claim it is free, and those parents, if they don't want their children to become dullards, have to pay for private classes, tell me how free that is. Now come to my household, me, my nuclear family, and my immediate extended family. None of us has benefited from free SHS. How many beneficiaries of free SHS? Nobody are in your family? I don't have any sibling Cousins. or younger one or cousin. I said Relatives. my immediate family, okay, who, immediate. Is, okay. who is in, so, and, and if I look at my, that circle, you're talking about almost four, my, 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 my side and my wife's side. really, really small. No, so, I'm asking you, me, my, my family, and my wife's family, if you look at those, those two, at least, you're talking about almost 40 votes. None of us has seen the benefit of free SHS. So, if this government is going into an election, on the basis of free SHS, how many beneficiaries of free SHS are there? 1.2 million. Hold it. 1.2 million. The 1.2 million people, there are siblings amongst them. Let's even assume that that's 1.2 million voters. And 1.2 million times two. Now you ask yourself, 17 million people are on the voting roll. So if a, a government can only boast of one poorly implemented policy as, as achievement... But doesn't this relieve that, that's you... That's a government we must kick this, out. Doesn't this financially we should relieve you from paying fees for some of your constituents? No, no. Because I still need to help those parents to pay for remedial classes for their children because of the three months or four months that they are spending at home, because of the disco light that Kufado is doing with their education. I still need to help to pay for accommodation for 14-year-olds who have been posted from Ningo Pram Pram and sent to the western region or to the northern region. And 14-year-olds, you have to rent chamber and hall or single room, single room self-contained for these children to go and live on their own. That is the problem. That's the reality. The, the additional cost that parents have to pay when their, their child's track is not in school. So how do you rob Peter to pay Peter? You're not even robbing Peter to pay Paul. You are taking from the, you are, you are making the parents pay more for additional classes and you claim you are giving them free stuff. Honorable, one of your constituents sent me a message. He wants me to ask you if you have presidential ambitions. Do you? I'm the member of parliament for Ningo Pram Pram. Do you I'm have running presidential for parliament. ambitions? Presidential ambition, what's that? Do you have intentions of running for president one day? I would serve my people in whatever way that they deem fit. Right now, my people have given me a mandate as a member of parliament. That's what I'm focused on, and that's what I'm discharging. But beyond that mandate... You're going you into know, conjecture you, again. You grow. Well, you're, people going, grow. you're going into conjecture. You, you I told know, you, you I don't ask, discuss conjecture. Yes, you can ask me, you know, what I intend to do five years from now. It's, it's a possibility. Um, five, years, five years, ten from years, now, Five years from years. now, I may... I don't know if I'll be running for a third term or if I want to retire to a farm. I don't know yet. So you um, might, we might well, find out to, one day that uh, so, so, so Honorable Sam George has become a farmer. I, I have a first degree in agric engineering, so it, it, won't be out of, it won't be out of place. But I think that we can have that conversation five years from now, ten years from now, and see where, 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 where now it you takes don't us have go. A, For now, my focus is on the mandate that my people have given to me. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. Uh, we hope that you have you know, either had some questions answered or had new questions in your mind. We're hoping that uh, you join us again.
next week, Monday, 8.30 p.m. My name is Nuong Falong. This is Spotlight on MX24. Thank you.